Well, it's brought to you by your Philadelphia area local Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDealers.com. Well, we go to the bottom of the third, and the Phillies are on top 3-0. Well, after the ball game today, we mentioned that the Amos brothers will be performing here at Citizens Bank Park, and Bob Crawford is our guest, and uh, he is part of the band and a uh, local guy. This has got to be cool to be able to come back home whenever you do, whether you perform uh, in Atlantic City or wherever, to perform in front of uh, your hometown crowd. These are the moments you cherish the most. I mean, it's just, it, is the, it takes you back to being 15 years old and just, uh, you know, you, just, you never imagined moments like this to be able to, to kind of blend all the loves of your childhood together into one thing. It's just incredible. Now, do you have friends and family that come and watch you perform at a place like this? I do. I do. I have a lot of cousins here today and uh, uh, tons of friends. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. And, and it also got to be good that the Phillies are on a roll. And that just makes the people more amped up when y'all go on stage after this one. Yes, exactly. I don't want to say anything because I know baseball is a superstitious sport and it just it is a great day to be. They can't do this. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> although we've been blamed for losses before, but they really can't hear us. Well, yeah, exactly. We, we want the Aver brothers to be uh, a small part of this great rally that, mm -hmm. that I, I expect, you know, where it's going to go through the whole season and into October. So. When you, uh, when you play in, in venues like this, because I know you play, you know, from time to time, and you roll the stage out, venues like this, what is that like? What is it, how does it feel compared to, let's say, a regular venue? Uh, well, it's expansive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and it, uh, there, is, there is this extra energy. You know, it is, I compare it to a festival. You know, you go out to a festival, you, you know, when, when you're playing a theater or like the Mad Music Center, there, the day has a routine to it. Um, you know, there's sound check, there are all these things that are just kind of marks and points in your day. But a festival or a Phillies game, it's like there's no practice and you run out there, it's one and go. You're out there, you're flying by the seat of your pants, and you're just, uh, you're, you're carried by the uh, excitement. Excitement of, of everyone uh, cool. who's here, yeah. Practice is over isn't it? It, it? it is. Well, y'all been doing it for as long as y'all have, I mean, it should be locked in and ready to go, right? Yeah, yeah, 20, 20 years, you know, you know. It just, it's just a matter of staying in the moment. Yeah, I, have, I had the fortune to talk to George Thurgood last year, and I asked him about, did you practice before Live Aid? And he's like, practice? No, we didn't practice. We never practiced. <laughs> I was like, another former uh, Philadelphia superstar. That's why I was above it. That's, oh, yeah, practice. Talk about practice. <laughs> That's so great. No balls and two strikes to Bryce Harper. Uh, Harper grounded out his first time up. And he lights that one out towards center field. It's not deep. The center field of Thomas slipped, so it's going to drop in front of him. First and second with nobody out. That's when you know you're going for it right there. Catch one off the end of the bat. The outfielder takes a step back and switch. Well placed water by the grounds crew out the center. Yeah, right there. And there's no chance for Reese to get to third base on that ball because of the you can't tell if he's going to come in and make a miraculous play, but it sets up a potential for a big inning. Yeah, Castellanos had an RBI single his first time up. Bob, give me an idea of what, uh, what team you grew up rooting for the most when it comes to the Phillies. Like, what, which one were you attached to? The team. Yeah. You know, Chuck McGraw, Gary Maddox, Bob Boone, Greg Lewinsky. That, did, did that was know, the iconic team. Did you know that Bullock is uh, my personal doctor? Really? And the horticulture <laughs> Interesting. He comes over to house and talks to us about our perennials and stuff like that, which I have no idea what he's talking about, so I just leave. Yeah. And uh, he just diagnosed me with uh, some medical advice that I'm probably going to need soon. Well, that's amazing. I'll keep asking that guy. Well, our first time we played here, I think it was 2017, I had the fortune of meeting him, and it was a beauty. It was exciting. Over to shortstop, oh, one hot, one go on the second, the one over the first in time. That was a great play. Larry Bowen was up here before. We should have. Uh, did you get a chance to be? I him? met him uh, in 2017 as well. Nice. Yeah. I met Juan Samuel. Uh, I believe the last time I was here. And, and Schmidt, you guys got to come down to Southwest Florida and play. Where? Sammy lives down there. Bull lives down there. I live down there. We can all come hang out with you. Well, we're going to be in. Uh, it might be in Walkers, but we'll be there. We, we're going to be down that way, I believe, next year. Perfect. 
what, what is the summer like for you guys now I mean, when things start to get really rolling? Yeah, so we're kind of heading into that. You know, we do this thing about 10 days a month. Our season goes from March to about, about October, early November. Um, we have, we've been doing it for 20 plus years, 21 years, and we're really focused on our families and keeping a schedule that keeps nice. us home as much as possible. So we do these, uh, you know, about six, 10 day runs with a few uh, weekends uh, in between. And, and, uh, but we're, we're about to be off for a week, a week and a half, and then we're gonna head out west. We're gonna go, go to Colorado and Montana and, and Idaho and um, out in big sky country. Mm. And, and a lot of people don't understand, I, mean, I, I have a lot of friends that are in country music, and they don't understand how rigorous it is Especially when you're first trying to get started and get noticed. I mean, you got to play yeah. a lot. Well, so we, we did that, you know, for yeah. years. We were in the 15-passenger van, gone for three, four months at a time. But that was before wives, and that was before kids. Yeah. And it was a different time. So, you know, we, we've tried to fashion our schedule, I think, every week you can uh, over the past couple of decades. And, I, and I, you know, what we're doing now works, works for us, especially coming out of a pandemic. I think there's a... A lot of temptation for a lot of bands to do work twice as hard this year to make up for the year we lost, but we're not doing that. We're just gonna, you know, pick up where we left off and, and try to keep that quality of life as best we can. All is low when it's three and one. Do you pitch yourself sometimes, Bob? I mean, I know that playing music is only part of who you are, and you do the podcasts sure. and things like that. But do you pitch yourself a guy from Jersey to be part of something as great as the Amy Brothers? So often. Yeah. So often, you know, we we, um, we had the pleasure of opening for Ringo Starr last weekend, two shows, and um, you know, he was really kind to us. We just we met him briefly. Uh, I sense the man who's very grateful for his life, yeah. and and kind of at 81 years old, is doing jumping jacks on stage, and I think he, I just sensed a lot of gratitude from him. Uh, and he was very kind to everyone. And listen, you know, the Beatles, they changed everything in music forever. And Beatles and Bob Dylan and Elvis, you know, they made rock and roll. They made rock and roll what it was for so long. And, and um, just kind of seeing him just reminds you how lucky you are to do what you're doing and, and to, uh, you know, be blessed. With it for as long as you have it, because it's it's not a long career, you know. Right. When you think about it. Okay, two of the solo bass. That's put the runners the second and third. So who who was your musical influences when you were first trying to get noticed? Springsteen. For me, uh, growing up as a as a young teenager, growing up in South Jersey, of course, it, uh, it was it was Springsteen. That's why I started taking guitar lessons when I was so young. Fly ball to center field, and Thomas is going to sit. Makes the catch. Well, Bob, we're excited to see you guys perform today. Uh, stand up, face the. How did you learn how to do that? It was a win. It was just it's pretty a win. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. So we'll see you today. It changed my life. Oh boy. Thanks for really appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank hey, everybody. Your brothers performing after the game today. Billy's are on top, three nothing. We'll be back. Right after.